uh, Bob, thank you so much for uh, uh, joining us on Yarra Rangers oh, Live TV and uh, sharing um, not just your life experience, but also this amazing structure here that uh, is, is been such a draw card um, in the local Warburton community. Um, I wanted to ask, when did this all start? Because I know um, this this amazing artistic expression has been here for decades now. It's been here for a long, long, long time. And uh, well, in the, like 1969, with two friends, I took off um, by ship to Europe on the Fair Star, Sitmar Line. And we drove 26,000 miles around Britain and Europe over one year. And at the end of that year, I went to Africa and hitchhiked all around Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda and Zambia, sleeping out with the animals a lot of the time. And then uh, I, uh, after several months there, I went by ship um, to the Seychelles Islands, lived there and did some building work there, mm -hmm. and then travelled on to Bombay in India, and then all up through India, been utterly mind-blown with all the arts and crafts and the different people. and. Also, the philosophy of realising that we're all part of one people as well, because we're all on the one planet and we should all like each other. And then I went up into Nepal, my first trip to Kathmandu. Mm, mm. And it blew my mind. I fell in love with the people, the culture. I loved the architecture. I, lots of uh, people in Kathmandu from all over the place, from Tibet, from Nagaland, from Darjeeling, uh, coming in from Sikkim, um, mm. all those Himalayan sort of kingdoms. And, and I, I just fell in love with the architecture. And, um, and, and then for a long time after, whenever I got my holidays, I would go to Kathmandu and it was my second home and I'd be off tracking in the Himalaya and looking at all the architecture. So when I came back to Warburton, um, naturally I would like to express something of what I've learned overseas. And mm. I felt very passionate. I was in love with Nepal. and. Uh, so I got this old building over the road, it was all falling down and um, my friend said, bulldozer, you can't fix that. I said, bullshit, you can fix anything. And somehow I, I made this building that attracted all these people and it was a time when Warburton had become like a ghost town. There yeah, were, yeah. Everything was closing down, the people had all gone, there was no jobs here. But I started making that building and I worked on it for 20 years. And, and this was in the, the 70s, is that right? Yes, some of these, it got burnt down in 1992. Yeah. So I worked on it for about you know, 20 years, or a little mm -hmm. bit over 20 years. And, and then it was, suddenly it's on television, it's, it's in the, the sort of, um, on the front page of Owner Builders magazine. I, I did my first TV show with Burke's Backyard, and, and all the people were coming up here, the tourists, and it's good for Warburton, and everyone liked it. And, and, when I, and for 30 years, the council, the Arrow Rangers Council, which I'm very grateful for, nobody put their nose in here. They didn't trouble me at all. And they, because I was promoting tourism. It was such a draw cut. And still uh, is. Yeah, and it, it still yeah. is. And I'm still promoting tourism. But now I'm, I'm not so good physically. I'm 77 years of age. Yeah, your um, health has gone down a little bit. And I, I've had several heart attacks. I've got 29% heart. So physically, I can't do what I used to do. Um, I still have passion though. You can see that's that's uh, clearly yeah, and I'm, yeah. yeah, and I'm waiting to have hip surgery of my right hip, and my other hip, the left one, I got that done about five years ago. Mm -hmm. So so I've nearly died several times, but I'm still here though. You're still here, and and the point is you're here still in Warburton. Yeah, and, and I, I love Warburton. I, I mean, I love the community here, and uh, very very supportive community, and. Uh, I love the nature, the trees, the plants, the animals, the birds, the kookaburras, everything. And um, so I've been very inspired to make things here. And, and fortunately, I've been encouraged by the council for many, many years. And that used to be in the good old days. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on now, but I've... Let, let's talk a little bit about, about um, yeah. the, the, like the, the house itself. Yeah. Um, so it started. It's very the historic. It's it is. Yeah. It started, the structure started in about the the seventies or so. Um, we had, and that was across the road, where it then burnt down in about nineteen ninety two. Exactly. You're right. Yeah. Uh, you've at the same time you were working on uh, the sculpture house here as well. Is that right? No. No. It. Um, Tell me about the house that we're in at the moment. And this the, place was original um, station master's house. And then the um, become a youth hostel, 
and I used to regularly get visitors over the road from the hostel people here and we'd sing songs and play guitar and mm -hmm. have nice log fires, have a good time. And then um, I started working on this place. The moment I moved in, I knew it was going to be my home. So immediately I was knocking out walls and windows and <laughs> building by And the council knew I was doing it because they were watching me. Mm -hmm. And then... Well, what time frames is it? Uh, Mid-90s? Uh, well, like, um, yeah, well, th this was sort of in the 90s. Yeah. Um, the place got burnt down in 92 and I moved in here fairly quickly so after. Soon thereafter, yeah. And yeah. I immediately started working on it and I've got movie films and things of mm -hmm. some of the early things I was doing. I just got extremely enthusiastic. I thought, yeah. well, this is my new project. Well, I mean, it's good to have a project. We, we need something to make our brain fire in the synaptic mm. cleft. No, you, it's good to balance the left and right brain mm. hemispheres, but um, when the brain fires in the synaptic cleft, you know, you, you tap into new ideas, you get new concepts, mm -hmm. you're original, you create, you invent things. And then, so suddenly I'm down here and I, no, doing travelling around the world, different places, mm -hmm. doing archaeology and regularly going to Bali and nicking off to Alaska and coming yeah. back and always bringing back artefacts. And you look around here, there's a lot of nice bits of artwork. And um, it, it, look, your, your, your home here is just amazing. There's uh, artwork from all over the world. Well, there is, um, yeah. And it just there's a phenomenal sense of uh, spirit here. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really amazing and uh, very beautiful, actually. And Thank I'm gonna, you. I'm going to say... Um, your your work, your artwork, your sculptures, your your homes—they've been featured. We touched on this before, but they've been featured on Better Homes and Gardens, uh, World's Most Extreme Homes, World's Most Extreme, Australia's homes. Most Amazing Homes, uh, postcards about four times, Fantastic. Coxie's Big Break, uh, yeah. Channel Nine National News, Seven News, um, the um, No Victorian College of the Arts did a did a documentary on my work. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Anna Capital was the lady that did it for her. Uh, it's, it's certainly degree. very well known and publicised, and not yeah. just in Australia, but all over the world. Um, yeah. And I know some of the publications that you've been in as well have received uh, widespread distribution and coverage as well. Well, they have. Well, uh, like, well, Dr. Chris James has sort of written peer-reviewed papers with the Australian National University, mm -hmm. and all my works added to the National Art Collection. Because uh, Chris James organised that, Dr. Chris James. Yep. So there's been papers of my work sent to just about every university in the world. Phenomenal. Yeah. That's and uh, and I realised that like, you no, know, with artwork and with life and things living, everything is coming and going, mm -hmm. including myself mm. and, and our friends and, and all of us. Yeah. All the trees and the plants and nobody knows mm. what they're even doing here. They don't know what happens when you die, but it's all coming and going. But um, if, it's, if something's proven to be very successful and people like it and they come to look at it, then it's a tourist attraction. Um, mm. Seems crazy to rip down the things that made it so popular. Yeah, and on that point, of course, yeah. uh, you've it's, been given a, a fairly hefty report here from... Well, it's unbelievably uh, hefty and unnecessarily too. Parts of it are, but, but I mean, they've virtually gone for my juggler vein. They've gone for everything there and everything. Okay. All, all the windows which have been there for 24 years, they suggest that they, they're not safe, um, that they cannot be made safe, and therefore they have to be demolished. All my beautiful bay windows, and, mm. I, and I get architects, overseas architects, coming here to take photographs of those windows. And it, it seems just ridiculous to say that they're not safe and can't be made safe and to pull them all down. It just seems like an act of madness, I think. I mean, I've, I've got a bit of a background in construction. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a structural engineer by all means. Yeah. I'm not saying that. But um, yeah. I, I would be surprised if they couldn't be made safe. Oh, absolutely. But having said that, I mean, uh, I know that council, they were going to have a meeting with you um, just uh, recently, well, last night, unfortunately. Yeah, that, well, that was, been postponed that was going to be yesterday. Yeah, so and they're going to go um, through the report with you point by point to see what can be done for, from yeah, a rectification yeah, that's, point that's of view. Yeah, that's right. No, and, uh, and I mean, I've, like, I really don't want to have any more hassles with council. Mm. Um, and unfortunately you're not in a position where you can get out there and do the work yourself. No, I, well I can't because physically I can't do it and financially I'm broke now. Mm. I had so, a very dear friend that was helping me out but he unexpectedly um, kicked the bucket. Passed away. He did, yeah. he passed away. He, and uh, look, I know there's a there was a, a big movement, or there is a big movement on Facebook at the moment. There's a, a Facebook page called 
Save Boinga Bob's House. Yeah. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. Yeah, Save Boinga Bob's House. And uh, certainly you can make some donations there, um, or you can even visit Bob and, and make don donations. But I think more importantly, it's also about the physical labour side of things. If you're mm. a builder or a tradesperson, or if you've got experience there, once Bob knows what can be rectified and how it can be rectified, um, there'll be a, a shout out to get all hands on deck at this amazing amazing property and icon uh, here in our very own backyard which has been such an amazing tourist draw card um, and I think Bob when, when you're down on Main Street Warburton and you look up the hill behind the Warburton uh, the, the, behind the wall, water wheel and you see your amazing sculpture house there yeah it looks it, good mm. it's not just it looks good but it encapsulates the soul and the spirit of the people of Morbidan. That's yeah, what I well, feel. It, well, it does. That's right. You know, um, there, there's so many eclectic people, artistic people out there, and to walk down on Main Street and look up and go, see that amazing structure, it just reminds you of that special connection that the people yeah. have here with this place and with the arts. You know, and I, I've built it out of out of love. No. Yeah, and you feel love, that. love for the community, uh, love for the environment, uh, love for myself as well. And uh, it was a passion. Mm. And as I've spent years wandering through life and you know, going to school and universities and things and getting involved in the corporate scene, people walking up corporate ladders, and I discovered there's a whole planet full of people that don't seem to know what they're doing here. Mm. Mm. And uh, I don't follow any particular religion, but I believe in goodness. And goodness is where you don't hurt anybody it's where you give out love you help others you, you know you do nice things that don't offend anybody mm. now what very wise words very wise words Bob. but the fact that we're alive at all i think it's quite amazing and uh, it is uh look just to i suppose bring this one to a close yeah um i've seen uh, i've seen some comments on councillor jim child's facebook page from i suppose some people that i won't call them the haters but certainly realists from a a red tape point of view. Mm. To those, and I'll ask you, to, I'll ask you this question: like to those that think, well, if if it was anybody else, the house would already have been demolished. There's some comments along those lines out there, and to those people that, that think like that and have that mentality, what what would you say to them? Yeah, well, I, I would say that the, that the council have encouraged all my work by turning a blind eye for 30 years, and they did like over the road because it was bringing back the tourism and they mm -hmm. published my work all over the place and uh, and that's always the hardest uh, yeah, well, thing for council i mean there, yeah. there's, there's obviously rules and regulations in place there's a building code um, yeah. and the, the hardest thing now i suppose at that level is how do we find a solution how do we find a balance how do we keep this amazing icon here yeah how do you keep how do you remain in this amazing structure um and moving forward how, how do people you know it's about it's moving forward how can people still enjoy? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd like creation. to sort of keep it going, yeah. but if, if they're going to give me a hard time, they'll, they'll force me into leaving if they're going to keep picking on me. So they shouldn't do that. Now, across the road, I know you mentioned before as well, um, there's plans to, of course, tidy up across the road. Uh, well, we were doing it, and then um, my friend Philip, that was helping me financially, um, he unfortunately, away. he passed away. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, with each one of us, we... we None, nobody knows when they're going to pass away. Mm. We are all coming and going. There's nothing unusual mm. about it. So if, if, I was to say, if I was to say to our viewers out there on, on Facebook world, um, if you'd like to volunteer and help Bob uh, maintain and get on top of the workload that's here to be yeah. done, because physically Bob's not able to, financially no, I can't he's do struggling. It, no. um, you can find Boinga Bob. You can contact him via the Save Boinga Bob Facebook page. Truly compassionate we can be, caring for each other as one humanity. We share one planet, Mother Earth. We share one species as we birthed. As a family, let's unite as one. Brothers and sisters, no matter where from. Feel others' pain, others' plight. Lend a hand wherever we might. Imagine life being turned about where we're the ones crying out, needing compassion, needing a hand, needing others to understand. Perhaps then we all could see the need for compassion from humanity.
Jessica, thank you again, Bob, for your thank time. You. Thank and, you, um, I look forward to coming I'll, back to you I'll next you, week. Give you a hug, yeah. We, Good on you, sir. The world needs more hugs and less bloody Absolutely. mugs. Absolutely. We don't need mugs. We need hugs. No. Need, need that lights on you. Mugs.